Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com That's my website Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes So uh, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep and My name is Jason Newland And that was really weird doing it in a different order to how I normally do it I'm shaking things up being creative <laughs> so the point behind this recording and all 280 previous recordings of these let me bore you to sleep things is well firstly to bore you to sleep Plus, those of you that listen regularly may find the other aspects of your life seem to transform more positively, which may not make sense in a sense, you know, as far as listening to me babble on about random, random blah, blah stuff. You may find that you feel more relaxed generally. Not just while you're listening to me, but, you know, during the day and Maybe when you're at work or when you're in a supermarket or when you're flying a kite, I don't know, playing on your skateboard, I, I don't know what people do these days, um, watching telly. So I've got to remember that, or you you don't have to remember, but I don't do much, so I don't have... Uh, I generally do have quite a boring life, so I'm trying to think, what do humans do? Socialise, don't they? Some people go out. So being in a social situation that maybe isn't always easy for everybody, you may find it's a little bit easier. You may find that you know, you might hear someone at work talking or someone that you perhaps didn't really used to get on with or found them a little bit a bit too much and perhaps you used to take offence at things they say but now you find yourself laughing at the stuff they say. Maybe you just find it a bit funny, a bit, a bit silly, not taking what they say too seriously not taking them too seriously and probably more important not taking yourself too seriously and I think that's useful actually because that can work on various levels because if you if you're working with an arsehole <laughs> let's say how it is if you're working with someone that's kind of um they might be a really nice person because I, I think I've fitted into that category over the years, and I'm I'm a fairly de I think I'm an okay person, really. You know, on the if you look really, really deeply with a with the most powerful telescope, you can find some decentness in me somewhere. And if you're working with someone like that. And the reason I say working is because outside of a work environment, or maybe a family environment, you don't normally kind of need to be dealing with people that you don't want to deal with. You know, we, we choose our friends. We can't choose our family, really, which is... It's a little bit of a shame, but you know, it's one of those things. But we choose our friends, so but when you're working with someone, you get a job and you sort of say, 
They say, well, you're going to be sitting next to Jason. And they, they walk off laughing. And you think, why? Why? What, what's going on? And then you realise that you're going to be sitting next to someone that's going to be annoying, perhaps. And if that person's purposely being annoying, when you laugh at them, they're not going to enjoy it. <laughs> they, they won't like it. So there's a benefit. Laughing at what they're saying is enjoyable for you because either you, you find it funny and if they're not, if they're just not purposely trying to cause problems, they just, they might just be naturally funny or they might be trying to like push your buttons but because you're laughing, their buttons are being pushed. So you kind of win, you know, it's a win-win situation. Not so much for them but kind of doesn't really matter about them that's <laughs> not your problem is it it's uh, a laughing at people's funny sometimes yeah, not, not in a horrible way but just yeah I, I find people that are really outrageous I find them funny I just find I do I find the more extreme people's views are, the funnier I find it sometimes. Because I don't really hold strong views, really. Not like... I think it's due to laziness. I just can't be bothered. It's like with politics and stuff like that. Or religion or anything like that. I just... Just believe what you want to believe, really. It's uh, not... I don't really think it's going to make much difference to others, hopefully. So that's what this is about. <laughs> this is about. That's, I went on a bit there, didn't I? Blah, 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 blah. It's, it's like watching a... Like watching a camel eat, isn't it? So just like almost like a washing machine going round and round. Like oh, this was interesting for the first hour. And now it's getting kind of tedious. So that's one of the benefits. Is you you may well. You may find that things change. And just like the way you think, you may start to think a bit more. And the reason I'm saying this is I'm not saying that, you know, everyone listening is all too serious and stuff, but I know that there are times especially if you don't, perhaps not get enough sleep, um, which can cause depression, which can cause stress, which can cause all kinds of, um, it, cause, it can cause rattiness, can't it? Like when you're just being ratty to people because, and you're snapping because you're basically not getting one of your main needs in life. Going without sleep is is equal as going without food. In fact, probably worse. I think we can go longer without food than we can without sleep. That's what I read somewhere. So, that's why, you know, if, if, you, if you ever say to us, oh, I haven't slept for two weeks, well, you have. You just, you've slept and you've not realised you've fallen asleep. So, for example, I had a, a chest infection in 2011. 2012, rather, 2012. And I think I spent two weeks awake. No, I didn't. 
but in my head I did because I was coughing kind of, it was really awful you know and I, you know but it's just one of those things but um, I was living in a place I didn't realise at the time but it was just full of mould and it just painted over the mould so I moved into this place and I was breathing and all that stuff which probably didn't help so I was sitting up in my chair awake but I did fall asleep but I didn't recognise it as sleep but even getting 10 minutes or half an hour actually shows that you're, you know, it gives you something. Another example is I have, I have sleep apnea and I, I was tested with this sleep apnea machine, not a machine which you use for sleep apnea, but a tester to see if you've got it. So I was all wired up and everything. And I had this machine attached to me and I didn't sleep I didn't get a wink sleep all night but when the result came in I'd slept for about six hours out of the ten hours because I, I, I spent quite a lot of time I had about ten hours in bed but I'd slept about six hours because it shows it shows when you're asleep it shows the brain waves or whatever you know the um, the pulse rate and all that stuff the oxygen levels it's like okay so what we think isn't necessarily what is I mean let's face it if what we think isn't necessarily true when we're awake why should it be when we're asleep you know so we are getting sleep and I say we I don't generally have a sleep issue myself um, which even if I did I don't think it'd make any difference I'd still be I could still make recordings about it because I do have a podcast for stress, anxiety, panic attacks and I both experience some of that stuff and I make recordings for it, helping people in that situation. And I'm very honest about it with people during that podcast. And wow, I'm not taking myself seriously now. After saying don't take yourself seriously. Now let me tell you about all the good things I've done in the world. Very sincerely. I'm a, t- a very, a very sincere person. <laughs> no. I think my only problem with sleeping is I do get tired because the medication I'm on causes tiredness. And I live quite a sedentary, is it sedentary or sedentary life? Which again, I think uh, leads to a bit of tiredness. Or, um, what's the word? Apathy. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel I'm probably more tired now than I was when I was younger, when I was working all day. And I'd be like filling lorries with heavy boxes all day long and then come home. And I still had more energy then at the end of it. But then I was 23 years old. Now I'm, you know, late twenties, so I think I should never have told people how old I am when I started doing this. I should have just not made any videos, just done podcasts. Although the podcasts weren't really very popular when I started doing videos. Um, generally, it wasn't really a popular thing, but. If I'd have just kind of pretended I was 22 then, which would mean I'd now be 36 instead of 49. 
Yeah, because I was 35 when I started this. Now I'm 49. Time, don't I fly by? You know what I like about it though? Is... So 14 years, it'll be Jan in January, it'll be 14 years since I started all this stuff. Although realistically it's not, it's longer. Because I started planning this and I started doing other stuff um, in, 2000, no, in yeah, 2004. I had a website, helpwithpain.com or .co.uk. Making, I think I made, I might have made some recordings on there. But I also and I had a free hypnosis service helping people with pain locally, and I got no interest at all. It took two years before anyone showed any interest. So 2006 is when it all kind of I was going to say popped, but not popped. It's like a like a big pimple. It was. Yeah, everything kind of happened not at the same time, but in January I split with my girlfriend at the time and I decided there and then, that's it, I'm going to do a, a Nash, uh, like a try and break the world record for the biggest hypnosis group session. And I wanted to do it online as well, I share it online. But at that time, there was there was limited you know, streaming stuff wasn't really available. So it was, you know, I thought maybe try and get a television station involved or something. But you know, I went. So I was going to do this. I got and on the other side, I started the free sleep the free hypnosis service a uh, free pain relief service but the free pain relief service was in color on these postcards and the uh, world record breaking stop smoking was in black and white so I decided to focus more once I kind of created the idea of doing both at the same time I decided, I got more excited about the pain relief because after all I'd already tried to do that in 2004 for two years and nothing so I thought okay I'll give that one last push but I'll also do this the stop smoking thing as well and I'll rent out a venue in town that holds a couple of thousand people and raise money for charity which was what I was going to do that was the plan so I had and I think I had 50,000 of these might have been 100,000 I think it was 50,000 of these postcards and they're quite big postcards you know like the ones you'd post made of card <laughs> just you know like if you went on a holiday uh, to a seaside town in England um, I don't know if they had them in other countries although they definitely had them in Bulgaria when I went there but I don't know if they and that wasn't a seaside town that was on a mountain it was, it was a snowy holiday but these um, so if you if you're American if you've been to London if you're from another country, you've been to London. When you go to like where the house of um, the palace is, there's lots of shops that sell um, English stuff, you know, with the Union Jack flag on and that. And you can get card, you can get those cards, can't you? You know, on little racks. Um, I do like racks. They're good. They're because they, you can turn them round. And you can hold lots of, sometimes you can hold books, you can hold CDs in them. But on this occasion, it would be um, like postcards, like different pictures and that. 
so it's a nice rack with pictures there'd be things like a bulldog you know a British bulldog on there there'd probably be pictures the House of Commons pictures of Big Ben and maybe pictures of like uh, the what's that twirly thing in London it's like a big ride oh the London Eye yeah I think there's a Manchester Eye as well I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's a couple of those in the country. Of course, London did it first because... Because London gets all the money, doesn't it, eh? The money goes to London first. Even though this country is full of really nice places. Manchester, Leeds, uh, Liverpool... Nottingham, just to name a few, there's, there's some really, there's lots of cities in England uh, other than London. So if you do come from another country, uh, like on holiday, it's worth visiting other places. Uh, we've got loads of castles all around this place in, in this country. And we're only a little country. It's only tiny, really, compared to the rest of the world. But we've got a lot of history here because we're just a lot older than most other countries. Which isn't really true because all countries are pretty much the same age, aren't they? However, millions of years, billions of years old, they're all the same age. It's just, it's just a bunch of land, isn't it? But um, <laughs> we, like to, we like to age our countries... I think mine's about, it's a few thousand years old. Yeah, I don't know. But if you come here, you don't have to be able to speak Viking or Roman or Norman, Normandy um, or any of the other, um, or French or any of the other countries that invaded this country you know over during the centuries um, although there are lots of different accents it almost sounds like a different language if you you have to like tune your ear in tune your ear into the accent and but it is almost like a different language not so much because I think it's more to do with the speed so if you go to somewhere um, for me I can tune into pretty much any accent as long as the person doesn't speak too quickly and that includes my own accent <laughs> that includes people if people speak quickly I just like oh what did you say and kind of miss half of what they said because I wasn't prepared it's almost like my ears don't turn on until halfway through a sentence I think I've got lazy ears you know people have lazy eyes I've got lazy ears they just they just switch off when they're not being used a bit like a bit like those lights you know those lights that if you don't make any movement, the light just goes off. Or a laptop, if you don't use it for 10 minutes, it goes off. I think that's what happens to my ears. There's some kind of a timer in there. I reckon, when I had that operation, because I used to be um, deaf in one ear, or par partially deaf in one ear, I had an operation when I was seven or eight, you know, eight years old, I think. I'm, they must have put a timer in there. And they didn't tell me how to operate it. Like one of those really complicated timers that you have with some boilers. You know, with all those like thousands of different dials, you've got to turn it around. It's like, you're sort of trying to break into a safe. Like, no. And then how do I do it? It's in my ear. I can't see. I can see. I mean, my eyes are fine. But I can't 
I can't see into my ear. So yeah, I'm not sure what the point of that was. That now that was boring. That's the point of this this thing. That was really boring. Oh. You know, I went into the shop yesterday, or the day before, rather. Didn't go out at all yesterday. Stayed in, stayed in bed most of the day. Just, you know, it's that 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 sentence under the weather. Well, I think I'm being a bit affected by the weather because it's been raining pretty much constantly for well over a week. And with a little bit of uh, reprieve, you know, I think, yes, the day before yesterday, it stopped for a little while because I went out in it. But today, it has literally just been all the time, all the time, constantly, constant rain. And it's been like that. And for some reason, when it's raining, it seems to... It gets lighter later and darker earlier. It's just, you know, it's, it's that time of the year, you know, it's December the, I think it's the 19th today. Or is it the 20th? It's a Friday, 20th. Yeah. It's the 20th of December, 2019. And I think we've had our longest day already. I'm sure we have. I don't mean ever. I mean, just mean this year. You know, this, not this year, but this, this cycle. Oh, so I didn't mean to say cycle. I'm not trying to be rude. But just, just, you know, the, the period between now and the next, um, when does a year, I suppose a year does start in January, doesn't it? So the longest day of the year is at the end of the year. Short, no, shortest day of the year, not longest day of the year. The shortest day of the year. So that it gets, it gets dark earlier and it gets light later. So yeah, the shortest day, not the longest day. Also... Pedantically, you could say, well, it's all 24 hours, isn't it? All 24 hours. Yeah, true, but, you know, we're talking about light-wise. You're obsessed with getting dark. You're obsessed with... T yeah. I'm not obsessed with it. I'm just talking about it, that's all. So, the light... I prefer... Because I sleep... I'm awake during the night. That's my favourite time to be awake. I get more done. I can't make recordings during the day. Because, you know, what's the time now? It's... It's one minute to one in the morning. Now, I know nobody's going to knock on my door. Nobody, not that I get a huge amount of people knocking on my door, but I know it's not going to happen unless, you know, an emergency or something, so that's fine. I know that no, there's not going to be any activity outside, especially with the rain, but generally this time in the morning, there's not a lot happening. There's not much in the way of traffic, not much in the way of even planes going over, so it's quite a quiet time. So between sort of midnight or one o'clock and four is the best period of time to make recordings. And also sometimes I'm genuinely really tired by sort of four or five. So I'll be making a recording and I'm literally falling asleep doing it. And I think that can sometimes be useful because if you're getting in tune with kind of how I'm feeling then you're feeling tired I can hear a train coming 
and a plane. Isn't it weird? Just after I said, can you hear it? Just after I said there's no trains or planes, both at the same time. Was that a helicopter? No, I don't think it would be a helicopter. Can helicopters go in the rain? I don't know. I thought they might just get rusty. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, I do think helicopters should have uh, parachutes. Like on every single part of them, they just pop. You know, if if the helicopter stops working, parachutes should just kick in. You know, just to make sure it lands safely. Or planes should be covered in really thick foam. You know, the stuff that you have in packaging. You know, when you get something in a box and it's got that foam packaging, the stuff that Andre loves to dig into and literally loves it. He ruined this whole flat a few weeks ago and he got he got hold of a bit of that and he started digging into it and he made a hole but he had he had there was these little tiny bits of white flecky like little white bogies everywhere. And I still find them. I don't even know where they are. He's like, he's hidden them. Because he runs in here sometimes and he's got them stuck to his back. Let me tell you another thing that he's doing at the moment. In my bedroom, I've got the shed. Which is going to be the place that I make recordings. Uh, the really quiet recordings in the future. When I finally manage to soundproof it and fix the door so it actually closes but you know that's that's not going to be probably till um it's going to take a few months to get that sorted so probably april time so that's that's in there andre's got this uh big long long tube that he climbs through it's about 12 foot long i think and you know it's curled up so he goes around it now I've never seen him do this before I've heard him do things in other rooms to try and wake me up and get me out of bed but I've never seen him like close up in action do it so I'm laying on my right hand side and it's dark but there's there's enough light shining into the room from the bathroom so I can see what he's doing but it's still dark so he can't see me he can probably see me but it's, he can't see that I've got you know you've got your eyes open but just like really kind of squinted a little bit so the person can't see you know like when you're sitting on a train and you got your bag on the seat next to you and someone's and there's an elderly person needing to sit down and you kind of pretend to be asleep so you don't have to let them sit next to you that, that kind of thing <laughs> that happened to me once I was on a bus going to college and I went upstairs onto the top of it and it's full of students Although I was a student, I was mature. I was a mature student. I was, you know, 38 years old, and they, most of them were probably not more than 18, 17. So I get on this bus, and there's only one seat available on the whole of the bus at the top. And there's this, this kid, a kid who's probably... 18, 19, I don't know, Pretend, pretending to be asleep. And he had his leg over the chair. Now, he might have been asleep, but I was saying, excuse me, excuse me. And everyone was just staring at me. Now, I know a lot of people 
would have removed his leg. Um, but I wasn't willing to, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. So I just sat on him. No, I didn't. I just, I just went downstairs. But it was, oh, <laughs> it took me hours to let that one go. In fact, I don't think I have yet. Oh, it's still there. I'm fuming. I'm so angry. <laughs> All these years later. Isn't it weird? Because that kid, although to be fair, when I was 18, I didn't want to be called a kid. I was a man. I was an adult. So that that human who was maybe 17 or 16 back then, that was what, 19, no, 2008. He'll be nearly 30 now. He's practically getting on to be a middle-aged man. Isn't this strange? And I've got no idea how I ended up talking about that. How did I end up talking about that? It must have been something I was talking about led me to that that's the thing if I ever try and go backwards to try and catch hold of the original thread it's almost disappeared oh I remember now Andre always comes back to Andre let's have a quick drink there mm -hmm. So I'm lying on my right side. Now to the to the left of me is my wall. To the right of me is the room. And there's a doorway. So I'm looking at Andre, where he is. I'm looking where he is. It's a shed. Next to the shed, near the door, is the his big um crawly, you know, twelve foot tunnel and he started playing in it and he's crawling through it and I thought he's just, just doing his thing you know didn't think it had anything to do with me it wasn't you know but I noticed he started bashing against the door of the shed crawling out and looking up at me looking up at the bed, looking, looking to see if I was moving, if I was awake. And he'd bash the door. He'd actually bash the door so it made noise. And he'd look to see if I was awake. And then I'd start crawling around and bashing stuff. And then get out and kept, kept looking to see if I was awake. At one point he actually, he ran up to the, to the bed to see, you know, get a better, closer look, to see if I was awake. And he'd go back and start bashing something. He was purposely trying to wake me up. And not only does he want me awake, he wants, because if I, the, the second I get up, he runs away. He wants me to chase him. And I don't always want to do that. When I'm asleep. But how cheeky and clever. He's, he, he's literally run, he doesn't, I see, he hasn't run out of things. He's got so many different ways of doing it to me. But I've tried to combat every way. He did it with a wardrobe, he used to just lie on his back and push the wardrobe door open and let it bang closed. Let it bang shut, just push it open and let it just bang shut. And he'd do that continuously until I got out of bed and he'd run away. So I got rid of the wardrobe. I put that in the cupboard, the storage room or whatever. He did it with the cupboards in the kitchen, so I'd 
I taped all the cupboards up so he couldn't do it. And now he's also scratching into the carpet and anything to get me out of bed. Yet when he's asleep, he don't want to be touched. Doesn't want to be bothered. He wants to be left alone. But when I'm asleep, different story. All about him is all about him. I've never been so angry. <laughs> so I've had a couple of um, what have I had? Yeah, I've had a couple of more messages, a couple of more reviews on my website so if you'd if you'd like to I'd like to say thank you to those Leslie and uh, just another person um, I haven't got my computer in front of me but if, you, if you'd like to be involved in the competition then please do uh, you get to win uh, Amazon Echo Dot and I'll announce the winner on Christmas Day, December 25th, 2019. And the thing is, now that I've got video reviews on there, I'm never ever deleting that website. Because they're too valuable to me. So if you do put a review on there, whether it's uh, a video, which is what I'm kind of looking for, but even if it's a written one, which I do appreciate, um, they will stay on there because I'm not getting rid of this website. Because to have a video reviews is, it's, what did they say a picture's worth more than a thousand words, which I think's silly because words are powerful hugely powerful but it's, it's lovely to see someone's face talking you know uh, not, I mean just to say nice things it's just it's lovely it's probably maybe it's nicer for me than it is for other people I don't know because it's being aimed at me um but I love hearing that, I love seeing it, I love seeing the words as well, you know, it's, but it does genuinely uplift me, it uplifts me, it really does, and i just like to thank the, the lady that sent me a PayPal gift, you know who you are, I will... I send you an email later to thank you. So that was really, really kind. It's almost like I'm getting little Christmas presents from people. You know, it's really nice. It's, it's lovely. And it's it does feel that. See, I know people listen to the other podcasts, and they are in a way more popular than this one is some of them but there's a loyalty there seems to be a loyalty base here I'm not saying the other people aren't loyal but there seems to be uh, this podcast seems to genuinely have fans uh, but maybe the others do as well. I think it's hard. I think it's because when anybody has ever left a testimonial or a review, they rarely mention any of the other podcasts. Sometimes they do, but the only podcast that gets mentioned the most is this one. 
whisper, let me boy to sleep. The deep sleep whisper one sometimes gets a mention. The relaxation for stress and anxiety gets a mention now and then. And I know that people are listening to those. Um, you know, due to the stats that I get. But there's something, it's from something a little bit different about this particular podcast. There is, I think there's something special about it. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what it is, but to me, it feels a bit special. It feels it's intimate, personal, but also a bit silly, playful. Um, I, I almost feel like it's interactive although I know that we're not kind of like having a conversation it's me just it's, it's, a, it's a monologue rather than a dialogue but in a sense though there is an interaction because you're having a reaction or a response hopefully feeling relaxed and feeling sleepy and feeling at ease feeling safe and having that that comfortable experience that you you kind of rely on when you listen to me And it's, yeah, it's, there's, so there is a, it's not just one way traffic. And you also do get an opportunity, you know, you can leave comments on my website, you can uh, leave a review, you know, you can also send me a message via PayPal as well. You can, you know, so there's lots of uh, different ways of, you know, communicating with me. I'm also on Twitter. I've got a couple of really, um, like regular fans on Twitter who, who like my posts you know, every time I put them on there. But I don't get a lot of action on Twitter. I don't think many people actually well, they might. It's just hard to know. I'm sure I probably get thousands every year of people that link, you know, click the link and stuff, but I just don't... I'm not really sure. Um, but people come from somewhere. But I've not been using my website as a promotional tool for the podcasts it's basically I've been using it more as a place where those who are already listening can go to to you know be part of this this thing that we're doing to leave a review to let me know how you're feeling and how it's helped and I know that some people have left uh, testimonials in the past on other podcasts, uh, you know, other websites, and then I end up getting rid of the website and I I forget to save the testimonials and I lose, you know, all that stuff. And someone's, you know, spent time, gone out of their way to to write that, and it's a shame, you know, and I can understand why some people think well I ain't doing one again I've already done five but it would be nice to hear from you and as I said now that you know if you leave a video testimony or a video review rather on my review page that's there forever the only reason I'm going to lose my website now is if I can't afford to pay for it other than that I'm keeping it forever and ever and ever this 
particular website. Well, I've had the jasonnewland.com since 2004, I think, the domain. I think I only started using it in 2006. But I've used, I've had so many different pod, not podcasts, but website hosts. So many, I mean, literally. So, so many. So many. So, so many. Oh, I did it. I got a Facebook portal. And I tested it out yesterday. That's probably why I didn't make a recording yesterday. Because I'd already done a, I don't know, probably 20 minute video thing. I deleted it at the end, but I was just testing it out, but it almost felt like I was doing a recording, so I didn't make an actual recording, uh, you know, for the podcast. But the, um, when I was listening to it, and I listened to it while I was making it on my phone as well, and it seemed to be absolutely fine, and I had one person tell me that the sound was fine and everything. But when I stopped it and I actually listened back to it, it was almost like clicking. There was a, like a clicking sound in the background. I left that with the radiators. I don't know, but so I don't think it's going to be useful for doing. Well, I suppose I could do a live Let Me Boy to Sleep or a live broadcast, but if I was going to put it onto my podcast as well, I'd need to record it separately. So I'd have a microphone and I'd record that, the audio separate to the video. So I'd do the live broadcast using the Facebook portal and then I'd also record the other separate. Um, that way the sound will be a better quality on the audio. And I suppose technically, if I wanted to, Yeah, I could download the video and edit it and add the audio from, you know, onto the video to make it sound better and everything, but I don't know if I could be bothered with all that. It just seems like a lot of work. It's terrible, isn't it? I'm just so lazy. I like doing it. But I don't necessarily like doing it. <laughs> I like... I like making the recordings, but then I want it done. Once it's finished, I want to upload it, and, and I, do, I do do minimal editing with the recordings that I make. So I edit the beginning and the end, so I sort of cut off whatever bit where I'm coughing and grunting and swearing or whatever I'm doing at the beginning of the recording. So I cut that off and then just... Um, ease it into the recording you know um, and then at the end I cut off the bit where I'm going where I'm swearing and everything at the end and farting or whatever and I cut that out and then I ease it out you know what do they call it you know like when you wind down when the volume sort of like goes down as it gets to the end so I do that and then I, I skim through it if I can't remember any particular loud sounds, I know we had the helicopter earlier, but I don't think anything else really happened. But if someone, for example, knocked at the door or something like that, then I'd go in and I could see it because it'd show up on the 
on the graph because it'd be a big a big bit of sound but other than that I skip through and if there's any big peaks I'll listen to it and if it's a little bit loud I'll just um, minimise that sound part just a little bit and I do that usually I don't have to do much sometimes I have to do it a few times and once that's done I save it and then I upload it to Spreaker a Spreaker podcast and then I share it on Facebook Twitter and YouTube and yeah, then I upload it to the other three podcasts I've got two which have all my sleep sleep stuff you know insomnia stuff and another one which is the Jason Newland's free hypnosis service which is the podcast embedded on the home page of my website so I always put that so whatever's the very latest recording is always available to listen to on my website as well as having a, an individual page for it as well where you can stream it or download it for free so there's that process can take maybe half an hour maybe longer depending on how long the recording is and what's needed to be done but it's alright it's alright I'm feeling quite relaxed Yeah, I'm feeling tired. Which is nice. I seem to find that this chair, because I took it apart, I was going to chuck it out because it's very derelict. It's very. And also I moved it away because it was in the way of because I had the new chair, so I kind of got rid of this one. Didn't realise it was the other the new chair was going to be broken. So I put this one back together, and it's wonky and it's not as comfortable as it was. But now after sitting in it for a few days a week it seems to have gone back to being okay actually so it looks awful because it's peeling and you know it's a bit of a I suppose a little bit of an eyesore it does squeak but then it did before But it's okay, you know. I do. The thing is, I need. I really need a bigger chair. But then, if I get a bigger chair, it's possibly not going to be able to get through the door. I need a chair that's higher, as far as for my head. So it supports my head. But well, this one does support my head. The other one didn't. It wasn't very high at all. It was, my head was kind of resting on it. This one is, this one is as high as my head with my back on it. But it's not as long as my legs. So I really could do with one that was just higher and longer. So that my legs were, my feet were on the actual thing 
probably something like how what my nan had. She had two chairs. I think they were both recliners, but one was it actually bent forward so that she could get in and out of it uh, much easier. So I don't need that because I'm not in that situation. But very comfortable very comfortable but it was very expensive as well I think um, yeah I think it cost over £2,000 I think if not more it was like electronic thing it, it was really good it cooked our dinner and everything it had a little micro <laughs> a little microwave built in but it was, it was a lovely chair um, but very probably not really what I don't know it's not that I'm trendy or fashionable but it did look like a, it looked like the kind of chair and that's probably just the patterning because she liked that kind of patterning but it wasn't really what I would go for I quite like just a black chair. Although I do quite like white chairs, but well, any colour really, cream, white, probably not red. Or brown. I think it would be nice to have one of those chairs, the proper, really old fashioned chairs that you sit in and you're just like, oh, it just feels so good. I'd like to have one of those chairs one day. Because if I had something, the more relaxed I am, the more relaxed I'll sound. So, yeah, I'm relaxed at the moment. Very, very relaxed actually. Yeah. So that's kind of it for today. For those of you that are celebrating Christmas and preparing for for the whole thing, I hope you're enjoying the process. And uh, so we've got what, five more days till it's over. <laughs> Not five more days till Christmas, and. Uh, I actually watched a really good program. Um, it was like a film, but it was a TV film. Oh, it's called Click and Collect. And it's Stephen Merchant as the star. And he's, if you don't know Stephen Merchant, he uh, co wrote The Office, the original Office in England, with uh, Ricky Gervais. He's about, he's six foot seven, very tall. Andre's now making some noise, that's nice. And but it's, it's, it's a really nice, gentle film. Um, you know, very witty, so it's, it's worth having a check. It was really weird though, I watched it online earlier today and then I went to bed and I woke up and like this is earlier and I woke up and it was just starting at nine o'clock on BBC One. They were showing it. It's like wow. I'd literally just watched it. Didn't even know it was on because I I don't have the T V papers. I used to have, you know, like the TV guides. We used to, in England, we had the Radio Times and the TV Times. And they basically both show all the channels, um, all the TV channels and everything like that, and what's on. But the Radio Times also has the radio channels uh, as well. And 
in my memory, the, the TV times wasn't quite as thick as the radio times. But the radio, but the TV times was brighter, more colourful, and a more colourful, different kind of paper texture in my memory. It was more glossy, more like a glossy magazine. And the Radio Times was, I don't know, it looked, looked like kind of recyclable paper, you know, that a bit, a bit denser, a bit, a bit duller. But, yeah. And they used to, you get two weeks of TV, a TV guide, and then it go into in depth about the films and about the stars of the films and there's Christmas specials and all that stuff. It was brilliant. I'd go through it and I'd I'd cross off what I wanted to watch and stuff like that. And I st- I still generally generally I always get one, but I don't get both now. You don't need to get both. I just get one. And the thing is, because I watch films, I'm not a film buff, but I like films, and I've I, I have since I was a kid. So come Christmas, you know, when they have their new releases, uh, Premier Network, you know, Network Premier or whatever, never seen before on BBC One. I saw it three years ago. You know, it's it's rare that a film comes out on telly that I've not seen. As far as, you know, sort of for Christmas, I mean. And that used to be one of the really good parts of Christmas, is the Christmas movies. Because there was... So when I was a kid... There was, you'd have the cinema, the films on at the cinema. I was limited to what I could go and see because of how little I was. And then the video, and then, so at that point, you'd have to wait maybe five, six years, seven years before it came onto the telly. And then VHS recorders came and video shops emerged. So there might be maybe a year between the cinema and the video. Maybe less, I'm not sure. And then another six years before it came on telly from video. So it's still the same distance between being at the cinema and being on telly, but you had it on video in between. Then the video got took over by DVD. And as time went past, the time span became less and less from when it was released to when it was on telly because the people on telly realised that everybody was watching it before anyway so they they I suppose they wanted to get it on telly as quickly as possible and then we had streaming services like uh, Sky TV obviously the only one really we had BS BSE BS Sky or whatever but and they had the movie channels. So they'd have live channels as well as, uh, yeah, at that time. Then they introduced the streaming sort of more recently, I suppose, in the last few years or 10 years or whatever it is. And of course, Netflix and Amazon and now TV and in other countries where you've got Hula and other ones as well which I don't know the name of them but I think every country has got its own kind of selection of streaming devices so now sometimes something that was made last year will be on television this year especially if it wasn't very successful or maybe a couple of years ago and it will be on so everything is moving quicker. But even then, I've generally seen it. 
seen I usually yeah I usually watch a few movies a week at least a couple maybe maybe more I've not really kept track of it but and the thing is with movies I I tend to remember them so I generally don't watch a movie more than once just for the simple fact that it's, there's no point unless it's specifically um, something that I really enjoyed you know action wise or special effects or something like that or there's so much going on in the movie that perhaps I need to watch it more than once to really kind of get the benefit and see what have, all the different things that are happening because I might have missed something but yeah I just uh, I do like some of the made for TV films though because they've been made specifically for Christmas so I've never been seen before apart from I suppose the people that made it have seen them haven't they but uh, but I've not seen it so it's nice to see something new and fresh and exciting it's so exciting to me it's fresh and exciting ooh ooh so I'm going to go thank you for listening Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. So today, do something nice for yourself. Buy a book. Buy a chocolate bar if you're allowed to eat chocolate. Watch a movie. Have a nice slow bath. Do something that feels good. Whatever it is for you, do something nice for yourself today. And I shall speak to you tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye.